Welcome back, everybody. Time once again for another episode of WVU Marketing Communications Today. Coming to you live from the campus of West Virginia University, it's a syndicated show that sits squarely at the intersection of data-driven decision-making and modern marketing practices. With the magicians who seem to know how the trick works, <laughs> like our host today, Matthew Cummings. Hey, Matthew. Here I am juggling, uh, juggling the show. Right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, thank you, Paul. It's it's good to be back here uh, with another insightful episode of marketing communications today from West Virginia University. Today we're going to discuss the balance between privacy and convenience with digital technology, and also explore some of the ethical uncertainties that loom in the strategic marketing communications today. It's an interesting show. Our guest to help us sort everything out is Amy Teller, marketing consultant with the Maxson Group. Amy has a bachelor's in art and art history from the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, and more than 10 years of experience working in fine art institutions, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York and the University of Michigan Museum of Art. Her career path uh, also includes work as a special event coordinator in which she collaborated with cross-functional teams to brand, position, and promote events through targeted distribution channels. Amy also recently received her MBA from William & Mary and is currently consulting for several startups in Northern Virginia and Michigan, through which she enjoys being able to apply her love of design and interest in uncovering driving forces underlying consumers' unmet needs to identify how an organization can best leverage its resources to maintain a compelling yet sustainable competitive advantage. That's something all of us are striving for. Amy is also on our team here at WVU. She teaches event planning and event promotion online in the Reed College of Media. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us today, Amy. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, we're glad to have you. So as you and I were talking about the episode here, uh, one thing that became apparent in our conversations is that digital technology is really uh, outpaced privacy protection. And as a result, it's fundamentally important for marketers to navigate. And I love a word that you used when we were talking about, you know, how do we describe today's episode? And that is this ethical tightrope to build sound and sustainable marketing strategies. So to get us started today, started down that tightrope, if you will, how do you feel digital technology has changed the landscape of marketing? Oh, you know, it's changed it in so many ways. But I think mm -hmm. first, it's really completely transformed the way in which brands communicate with consumers. Okay. You know, marketing's no longer limited to the more traditional mediums of print or, you know, television and radio ads. You know, marketers can now get in front of consumers instantly, you know, across multiple channels. And it's also changed the entire structure of the discipline. You know, today marketing really mandates an integration of art and science. And I'm pretty sure this was something that was mentioned in a previous WVU podcast, but I think sure. it merits repeating because marketers must now really combine both creative skill sets and things like graphic design and branding and typography and creative content writing with really more like technical and analytical skills that are focused on things like data analysis and search engine optimization and e-commerce tools. And to dovetail on this, you know, technology has also created this new emphasis on data-driven marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. You know, marketers have an access to an enormous amount of consumer data and analyzing that data has really become fundamental to strategic marketing. So I can't help but think as you, uh, as you shared that, that digital technology has really leveled the playing field between consumers and marketing. So, or marketers, I should say. So what once uh, used to be kind of a top-down approach or a, an inside-out approach has really leveled that playing field. So what are some of the benefits of utilizing digital technology for, uh, for us marketing communications professionals? You know, I would say, you know, it's really improved the overall effectiveness and efficiency of marketing campaigns. 
Mm-hmm. You know, tools like automation allow for better controls, and it streamlines connectivity in a way that allows marketers to get in front of consumers faster, target highly specific segments, and increase competitive scope by reaching larger numbers of consumers, often on a global scale, and to do all of this in a more cost-effective manner. So you can't really talk about digital technology, though, without discussing data. So what role has data played in the marketing arena, and how has that benefited marketers? Absolutely. You know, the influx of big data provides marketers with constant, you know, often minute by minute, even second by second feedback, (laughs) which allows marketers to really have a finger on the pulse of consumers to really understand not just segments, but individuals. And it allows marketers to track trends and consumer behavior and uncover some of the driving forces behind the needs of consumers based on real-time behavior, not just historical data. Um, Big data also allows marketers to anticipate fluctuations in the marketplace and then really leverage that information to adapt quickly to changes and consumer preferences. And it's really this level of what's called digital differentiation Mm. or having the ability to target the right customer at the right time in the right way that's really become imperative to creating a sustainable competitive advantage. So that's how it has benefited marketers. But the, let's talk about consumers. So how has, uh, how has digital technology and the increased use and reliance on data uh, improved the marketing space for, for consumers? You know, from a consumer's perspective, it really creates something of a paradox. And what I mean by that is that every time we step into cyberspace, we leave a digital footprint, you know, from Mm -hmm. our purchase and search histories to when and with whom we communicate, even our location and images. And all of that information is vulnerable to being tracked, you know, but the same technology also provides customized content tailored specifically to our interests you know, often instant access to products that better meet our needs. And it's created an overall more accessible and convenient marketplace. And this is where the issue of privacy versus convenience really comes in. And I would argue that this privacy paradox is really driven by our own collective choice as consumers for convenience. Um, For example, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I personally find it really frustrating if I have trouble logging into a secured site because I have to reset my password. Or, you know, if it takes more than a few seconds for Google Maps to find my location and give me direction. Right. And, you know, this is, you know, there's some really interesting research, actually, that agrees with this. According to a survey by the Pew Research Center in early 2019, quote, the share of U.S. adults who say they use certain online platforms is statistically unchanged from where it stood in early 2018. And, you know, this is despite a long stretch of controversies over privacy, fake news, and censorship on social media. Right. And along the same lines, there's an article published in 2017 that found, quote, Consumers believe data is ultimately used to enhance their interaction with the brand, and they weren't as concerned with the technicalities or the source from where the data was being taken as long as they were informed and received a better online experience. And I think what these findings really indicate is that despite potential privacy concerns, you know, consumers really value the convenience afforded by digital technology. Hmm. So I want to springboard off of this uh, privacy paradox that you mentioned. And what are some of the key ethical considerations, uh, particularly in terms of privacy and security that are that are underlying digital technology for, for both marketers and, and also throwing consumers as well? Well, you know, privacy and security is, 
certainly a hot topic in the digital world, you know, particularly after Facebook came under criticism for its mishandling of user data. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've thought about this a lot, and I think part of what makes this such a fascinating and fiery topic is that, you know, we basically entered into kind of a digital wild west. You know, technology is rapidly expanding into previously unknown frontiers, and the law is basically having to play catch up. And what that does is open the door for potentially unethical practices to fill the gap. You know, and today there's so many emerging technologies that have the potential to create some ethical issues surrounding privacy and security. You know, take facial recognition. You right. know, I think the fact that it seems to make the headlines like daily, I think really <laughs> underscores there, there's a broad public reckoning over issues of privacy and surveillance. In fact, there was a New York Times article on Monday about how organizations are racing to build facial recognition systems. Right. And they're mining these images from social networks, dating services, even surveillance cameras in restaurants and colleges. Wow. And this is being done with little to no oversight at this point. It's kind of like a digital manifest destiny, you know, and other technologies include biometric identification software that can identify a person by his or her heartbeat from over 600 feet away. We have artificial intelligence and neural networks that can learn from data and then make decisions with scary little human intervention. Uh, Location-based technologies can broadcast your current coordinates to local businesses. There's autonomous vehicles. Even Amazon's Alexa has raised privacy concerns. And there's absolutely fascinating new research out of the University of Washington on direct brain-to-brain interface in which they were able to transmit decisions via the internet to the brains of other participants. Mm. And, you know, it's one thing to have your computer hacked into, but, you know, what if someone was able to hack into your brain? You know, it really does raise some of these questions. And it also creates something called a Promethean problem. Mm. So, you know, if you remember your Greek mythology, Prometheus (laughs) stole fire from the Don't tell my high school teacher. (laughs) Well, maybe you'll remember this story. It's pretty graphic. Yeah. So, um, you know, he stole fire from the gods, gave it to man, and then was punished by Zeus. And by punished, I mean he was bound to a rock, and each day an eagle fed on his liver, which regenerated overnight <laughs> to be eaten again the next day. <laughs> but, Sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we're recording this at lunchtime. Pretty graphic, I know. But, you know, throughout literature, Prometheus really became this kind of personification of the human striving for technological advancement and its inherent potential for unintended consequences. And, you know, I think in many ways this parallels exactly with where we stand right now with digital technology. Interesting. Uh, We're going to take a quick break now. We're going to come back and talk more with Amy about this privacy paradox and also some of the important ethical considerations for marketing communications professionals to consider. So hang tight. We'll be right back. And we just want to point out to those uh, listening, uh, after that graphic uh, description of a Prometheus there, uh, that West Virginia University's online data marketing communications program is the first graduate program of its kind in the country, focusing on strategic thinking, critical problem solving, and informed decision making. Data marketing communications program prepares you for your career by learning those innovative tactics that you need to succeed today from award-winning faculty like those on the show today. If you want to learn more, it's pretty simple. Just go visit them at at dmc.wvu.edu for the Data Marketing Communications Program at West Virginia University. Oh, my. Well, I think we have uh, set two records here today. First, uh, I don't think anybody's ever talked about Prometheus here uh, in such <laughs> detail. And secondly, it's the first guest I've ever, first person I've ever met who shares my academic uh, background. I, too, went to the University of Michigan as an undergrad and then studied uh, graduate work at William & Mary. So there can't be many of us here in America here. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. So that's why I actually know those references. Somehow we, <laughs> with that uh, background, we seem to, that's the way we talk. You know, that's just our normal conversation here. So, <laughs> so you're in good company. I'll let you guys continue. So before the break, uh, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Again, you're listening to WVU Marketing Communications today. Our guest, Amy Teller, marketing consultant with Maxon Group and a thought leader in digital technology, privacy, and ethics. So I want to jump back into it. Before the break, uh, we talked about this privacy paradox. We talked about security and privacy and convenience. So where where do you see this line uh, being? And where should this ethical line be, be drawn? You know, I think that's really the pivotal question here. Mm-hmm. You know, we're living on the cusp of a digital revolution. And just like the industrial revolution, you know, these changes are causing major disruption and really forcing our hand in deciding where to draw some of these ethical boundaries. You know, regulations are evolving and that line between what is right and wrong is constantly shifting. Um, And establishing exactly where to draw the line can be tricky Uh, Because as my professor of integrated technology at William & Mary said, you know, it's really more of a chalk line (laughs) that can easily be erased (laughs) and then moved. You know, but as a general guideline, there are basically two key ways in which the ethical boundary can be violated. And first is a lack of transparency. You know, consumers aren't, you know, often consumers aren't even aware that personal information is being collected at all. Right. And second is the unauthorized sharing or disclosure of that information. So, you know, drawing the line on the, say, you know, more conservative side of these is probably, you know, a good course of action. But, you know, as marketers, it's really about finding that balance between Mm -hmm. collecting enough data to target your audience effectively while also maintaining the privacy of your users. So where does the onus lay then in protecting sensitive data? Is it with marketers? Is it with consumers? Or is that uh, a shared responsibility? You know, I agree. I I really think it is both. You know, and from a marketing perspective, marketers have a real moral imperative to safeguard user data in order to protect brand image. And today there's a conscious consumer preference for organizations to fulfill a certain level of social and corporate responsibility. Mm -hmm. And with consumers ability to instantly post comments and reviews, you know, consumers have more of a voice than ever. So maintaining a strong, you know, ethical standard is really fundamental to creating the right image in the mind of the consumer. Um, You know, but as consumers, we also have a certain level of responsibility to protect our private information. You know, we should all do things like read the terms and conditions and privacy policies (laughs) of the apps we choose, which I never do. (laughs) I never. (laughs) Scroll, scroll, accept. And I'm I'm guilty, Uh, guilty of that for sure. (laughs) Uh, You know, but we should also update the location settings on our mobile devices and, you know, check the settings on our social media platforms. But, you know, you know, on the other hand, technology is so pervasive today that really in order to operate effectively in this digital world, I think you have to have a certain willingness to let some of that go. Yeah. So you can't have it both ways. And in essence, you know, I think what you're saying here is that consumers have to take a leap of faith. Uh, In your opinion, what role does trust take in this uh, delicate relationship that exists between brands and consumers? Well, you know, ultimately, the foundation between a brand and its consumer is built on trust. Mm-hmm. You know, and if that trust is breached, whether deliberately or accidentally, then that relationship is really jeopardized and organizations can risk losing their core customer base. So what and, and that doesn't change, if you think about it, between an offline relationship that you may have with a brand or organization and and one that is um, one that is online, one that is digital in nature. 
so that trust is ultimately the foundation for, for that relationship. What steps, though, can organizations take to ensure a more ethical approach to their marketing strategies? Yeah, so, you know, I've touched on a little bit of this, but I think <laughs> it's important to go a little more in depth here. You know, first, it's critical to keep in mind that just because something's not illegal doesn't mean it's ethical or that there won't be repercussions in the future. And again, I think Facebook is the perfect example of this because for years they operated under lax user data privacy and security oversight, and now they face major fines to the tune of $5 billion. And they're serving as kind of a cautionary tale that really underscores how the Federal Trade Commission and other federal and international regulatory agencies are really taking a more aggressive stance against the unethical handling of user data. So, you know, the first step organizations can take to protect themselves is to establish a strong ethical agenda by first maintaining what I call ethical fluency by keeping up to date on, you know, the current privacy and security regulations. Second is maintaining transparency on all data collection and use, you know, because consumers really just want to be informed about what information is being used for what purpose and to have the ability to control the flow of that information. And what this does is it allows consumers the power to take and make informed decisions about participation and that builds brand trust. And third is maintaining a standard of truth throughout all marketing communications. You know, this is where the line can become a little fuzzy because there's a certain level of embellishment on the part of marketers to enhance the positive features of a brand to attract buyers. But, you know, the hard line here is when claims become misleading or false. And there are a lot of examples of this, but a recent example is the class action lawsuit filed against Fire Festival for false promotion. So mm-hmm. Fire Festival, if you remember, was the 2017 music festival in the Bahamas right. that really hinged on powerful influencer marketing. And it promised this like luxury expended experience, but it really ended up being um, a complete disaster. <laughs> and they really misled attendees. Putting it nicely. <laughs> in fact, a federal judge ruled that um, influencers who promoted the event can be subpoenaed. And the FTC has since ruled that influencers must clearly state when they are paid for a post by using hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored. And I think this really marks a move to holding influencers more accountable. Sure. Um, another step that you know, organizations can take is to establish an internal code of ethics that centers on first avoiding the slippery slope <laughs> because ethical issues often start small, you know, with something that seems harmless, like scanning employees accounts for personal inf- information because you're curious. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> But that can quickly snowball into less ethical activities, such as sharing that information. You know, so in order to avoid slipping down that slope, it's really best not to take that first step off the path by right? asking, you know, how would I feel if my personal information was being handled this way? Second is to avoid ethical blind spots. Because, you know, we tend to overlook unethical behavior when it's not in our best interest. And a Mm. prime example is how investors ignored Bernie Madoff's suspiciously consistent returns. And, you know, when confronted with these types of ethical dilemmas, it's best to take pause, you know, ask questions, and then really position yourself judiciously. You know, save notes and emails, you know, get things in writing Um, to present a well-documented case, if need be. And last is to avoid what's called ethical amnesia. Mm. (laughs) And this is when you do things like inadvertently share confidential information, for example. You know, and so if you have a lapse in judgment like this, it's really best just to take full responsibility. But 
overall to circumvent these ethical pitfalls. It's basically essential for organizations to first recognize potential ethical ambiguities behind the use of digital technology, create a culture of responsibility for protecting personal data, be good stewards of that information, and then ensure oversight to prevent misuse. Very interesting. Do you have any other advice for uh, emerging professionals in this space? Uh, anything else that you want to add or any key takeaways as we, as we wrap things up here? It's just really important to create this culture of responsibility, you know, mm -hmm. um, and an awareness to spot unethical behavior and then the tools to prevent it from escalating. And it's just, I think it's always better to, you know, walk on the more conservative side of the line, because it's better to be safe than sorry. Great advice. Great insights here, Amy. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. And thank yeah. you for listening to WVU Marketing Communications today from all of us here at West Virginia University. I hope you found today's episode as informative as I have. Until next time, take care of yourselves and stay safe on that tightrope. Thanks again.